Crossing the Sahara in these modern days is hard enough, but attempting to cross it in the Cretaceous period was absolutely suicidal. Approximately 115 to 95 million years ago, during the time of Sarcosuchus, North Africa was lush and tropical, and throughout the region it was crisscrossed with large freshwater rivers. This is where the flesh crocodile emperor liked to hunt and hide. Basking in the sun or wading in the water while deciding what its next meal was going to be, this super croc frequented the areas of modern-day Mali, Niger, Algeria, and southern Tunisia. When hiding, the Sarcosuchus took advantage of the river waters. It had to, considering its enormous size. Measuring in at approximately 40 feet long and weighing in in the avenue of 8 tons, it needed every bit of cover that it could get. Luckily for the Sarcosuchus, there was no shortage of fresh waters to hunt in across Cretaceous North Africa during that time. Now you might think that it would be impossible to hide at this size, and that's understandable, but consider this. The modern saltwater crocodile, a known man-eater, is able to hide just fine and measures out at half of the Sarcosuchus' size. If this ancient hunter were still around, there are still places where it could hide and eat pretty much anything that came along. Now there's a thought that will keep you awake at night. As far as natural predators, the Sarcosuchus would have been almost indestructible once it reached its adult size. Unlike the crocodilians of today, however, which take around 10 years to reach their adult size, Sarcosuchus grew slowly throughout its entire life. This meant that other predators could eat it, but they had to be lucky enough to catch the wily crocodile while it was still small. Even then, if you could catch a young Sarcosuchus, you'd have to have a pretty strong bite to eat it. Sarcosuchus was covered in osteoderms, which are essentially plates of armor, efficient enough that evolution keeps producing them in the creatures of today. Our modern crocodiles have osteoderms as well, but their armor suffers with the occasional break in the plate arrangement, commonly around the neck and various other parts of their bodies. The Sarcosuchus probably didn't have this weakness. So what do you eat when you are 40 feet long and equipped with such deadly weapons? You think, well, anything you want. But Sarcosuchus likely dined almost exclusively on fish and turtles. Mind you, sometimes this might have been fish like the Mausonia, a relative of the Coella camp, which could measure in size at up to 13 feet long. A possible exception to this rule might have been the Spinosaurus, the largest carnivorous dinosaur that there ever was. Spinosaurus loved to eat fish, and so this would have put him in the emperor's domain far too often to avoid the occasional tangle. Now, you are probably wondering why the Sarcosuchus didn't eat more dinosaurs, and the answer lies in the design of its jaw. Like the modern-day crocodilian known as Giriol, Sarcosuchus Imperator had a long, thin snout which was better designed for scooping up fish than to all-out combat. The Imperator's relatives in South America, such as Dianosuchus, had wider jaws, and because of this, they were more combat-ready. Wider jaws allow for eating not only a wider variety of prey, but for executing the famous crocodilian signature move known as a death roll. This is where a crocodile grabs its prey and spins its own body around, allowing it to rip limbs off or to shred the body of its victim. With his thinner jaws, it is unlikely that the emperor's skull could have sustained the pressures associated with this move. That's not to say that they were completely safe, however. One of the most interesting features of Sarcosuchus was its eyes. Instead of moving to the left and right like you see in modern crocodilians, the Sarcosuchus' eyes moved up and down. If you were approaching the edge of the water, then Sarcosuchus definitely knew you were there. 
Then it just needed to decide if it wanted to move closer and make you into a snack or to back away and look for easier prey. Aside from its vertical eye movement, Sarcosuchus also had another interesting feature on its head, a bulla. Think of it as a large globe at the end of Sarcosuchus's nose. Now, we don't know if it used it as a club or if it served the purpose of creating sounds to call other Imperators to join in for a big kill. But this distinctive feature definitely served a purpose, and it was present on both male and female Sarcosuchus specimens. Alas, the Sarcosuchus would not reign forever. Along with other prehistoric creatures, the Sarcosuchus was doomed to extinction, and over time, it and the other giant crocodilians eventually fade away. The closest of the surviving crocodiliforms in modern day would be the gharial for its appearance, and the saltwater crocodile for being the largest crocodilian reigning today. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and comment below.